Hey everyone, my name is Azizia and today I want to talk to you about this awesome project that I created last year, which I interviewed 20 million women that they share their stories to the world that they get. And my vision was to inspire and empower other immigrant women that they want to come here. They want to immigrate to Canada or any other countries, but they have that fear that what's going to happen next or what's, what's happening, or they are going through a hard time because we all go through it. And I just want to inspire them by watching these videos that if they did it, they can do it too. And they are not alone. I hope you enjoy them. And if you like my, my channel, please subscribe and I have more projects coming on soon. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Hello, hello. I'm here with Helen Shumilova and she's a marketing consultant. And we're gonna talk about my project and her struggles when she emigrated to Canada. So today is March 29, 2020, and we are in quarantine, right, Helen? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. How are you doing with the quarantine these days? Yeah, you know, some ups, some downs, but yeah. trying to stay positive, do some exercise at home, <laughs> make the food last for longer time. So I have three kids of my own. Right. They're six five and two right so I feel, you know, sometimes the blessing sometimes like oh we're in two bedroom apartment so it's tricky it's never boring that's for sure <laughs> and always busy but i was like how do we make sure that we all exercise stay healthy and it's enough food <laughs> that's probably <laughs> the big things because we're like okay everybody suggests to go once every two weeks to the supermarket now so I'm like, okay, how, how do I plant the food so it's enough for five people <laughs> at least three times a day plus snacks, right, um, um, for two weeks. So that's been a new challenge. And I think activity has been really keeping us healthy, I hope. So we all found our videos. <laughs> okay. Like squats, so we try to do that every morning. <laughs> and thank God we still can go outside. So that helps a lot, at least, you know, to walk around for 30, 60 minutes a day yeah uh, yeah lots of activities with the kids oh definitely definitely i i we were talking to my with my husband that it's amazing how i guess you bond a lot more too because you literally with all the time together <laughs> so you we played the games that we didn't play for a long time which was I think we wrote the down all the things we need to like try and do and all the games and I think we're in two weeks we we did it all. <laughs> That's so, amazing. So it's a bonding time too. So yeah, definitely. How are you? I'm good. I'm keeping busy with the project and interviewing every day and uh, yeah, focusing and I'm I'm doing some live dance now on Instagram to just keep up the mood and keep everybody else's mood up so <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah maybe helps. maybe i can get you tomorrow on instagram live dancing yes oh sounds great sounds yeah. great <laughs> i would try it <laughs> i know you love to dance so we, we're gonna do that tomorrow sounds good okay okay then i'm gonna talk about the project because as you know i'm doing this project empowering immigrant women Mm -hmm. who wants to emigrate to Canada or who already emigrated to Canada. But as you know, the first few years, we all struggle. Um, we lose ourselves and it's just these stories, uh, they're going to help other women to empower them to say, okay, we did it, you can do it too. So that's the whole story behind it. And mm -hmm. everybody has a story. I have, I have my stories and the struggles and uh, for the last 25 years. So at the beginning it's hard, but the life journey is always like, you know, keep going. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> never yeah. stop and keep, keep, keep going, yeah. keep moving. So uh, I'm just going to ask, um, when, like how old were you when you moved to Canada and from where? So if you can 
tell about you know at the beginning introduce myself a little bit yeah for sure i uh, both um i was born in ukraine in kiev in the capital my parents immigrated to ottawa uh, ottawa canada the capital of canada right. i was 14 so i came at the beginning of high school uh, and it's, I mean, I think immigration is hard in different age. And of course, younger you are, I, I think it is easier. Um, but I very much remember the time we immigrated. And I think it really shaped and maybe who I am because of that. And as an immigrant, I said, like in a child of immigrants, it's also um, an experience that you live that kind of stays with you forever. You know? Because I do remember some things back home, but I also remember how difficult it was when we came here. Uh, but also, I think that the biggest difference what I see, kind of, I guess, depending on the age you come to Canada, is how fast you can adapt, right? So I think younger you are, it might be a bit easier. Older you are, you have more memories, you have more things kind of from back home, so it might be a bit harder. But um, for me, I think is really the attitude and the positivity and really thinking forward versus thinking back that's really helping someone in immigration. Because I also lived abroad in Latin America. And for me, it was almost like immigration because I went to a place where I didn't really speak the language well. I lived with a new family. So that was my exchange year. Um, and But it felt like another immigration just because I felt that I grew so much, that I learned so much. And I was a bit older then, like I was at the university already. So I think uh, for me, that's kind of, it's coming 14 is still an immigration, but it might be a bit different story for someone who is you know, 30 or 40. Probably. True, but like, do you remember, especially at the beginning, what was the struggle, even at 14? I'm sure. Yeah, like I, I cried. I cried leaving Ukraine. And my mom, I think, always reminded me of that. So I could never forget that moment, even if I wanted to. But she was like, do you remember how much you didn't want to come? And you said, you ruined my life forever. And you took me away from my friends. And I think at this time, stage in your life, you always think that it's, you know, that's everything to you, right? Your friends, your, you know, first love, maybe it's like everything is like, if you take it away from me, that's it. Like I have nothing else, right? And I did cry and I really didn't want to go. And she said a phrase that I think really changed my view. He said, if you don't like it, you can always come back. Oh. And I think it made the decision or even packing much easier. I said, okay, I can always come back, right? And I think that come back, I mean, that can be a strategy for someone moving to a new country. They can say, you know what, if it doesn't work in two years, I can come back. If it's a great strategy, I don't know. But in that, for the kids, I do think it is great just because when you're younger, you're a lot more adaptable, right? And, mm -hmm. and I find when I came, I was, okay, well, if something goes wrong, I can always go back, right? Right. Uh, so at the beginning, that was the mentality, but then I realized, well, I didn't really speak. I knew some English. I took classes in school in Ukraine, but it was very basic. When you come and you're really in this new environment and everybody speaks with different accents. And so it was really challenging, but I was very grateful, I think, for one thing that in Canada, as a student, they have um, English as a second language class. Right. And in that class, I remember being there and so impressed. When you come from Ukraine, everybody's kind of Ukrainian and you can tell they look Ukrainian. I don't know, but you know, like we're all white skin, I guess, even though we might have different color hair. But you sit in this class and everybody is different. I, I think maybe we had like two cultures that had two people from that culture. Right? Maybe in Arabic, I think, and we had a few Asians, but everyone was so different. We were probably 15 students. And I sat there and I'm thinking in my head, this looks like a world in one classroom. You know, the cultures I've never knew anyone from, I never heard the language. And all of a sudden I have this, you know, new friends that are literally from every single part of the world, right? So like my first friend, one was from Europe, another country, another one from Asia, another one from Arabic. And another one from Latin America. So I feel like my first friends were so diverse. And like, how do we become friends? You know, just because we're in this group together. And it was really special to me because those 
friendship stayed with me through my high school university years and it was very special uh, and uh, of course I'm going to regular classes you need more people that are not uh, immigrants they're Canadian and maybe they moved uh, you know when they were very little and I made friends with them but everybody had a story and for me it was so fascinating thinking that wow this is a country with so many cultures and I was like as a person like I love languages and I love people and just I could not stop appreciating that and I think that really helped me to go through it thinking wow I I can speak any language I want I can meet friends any country I want right but the biggest struggle was the language because at the end um, it helped that some people were in the same boat like in my class English was a second language but it was really hard and I'm very social and I love making friends and I felt like I was lacking that skill because I don't I didn't have the language and funny I mentioned to you that I went to Latin America uh, as well for a year and I was the same my Spanish wasn't good and I was like I need to talk to people I need to pass all the classes I signed up for and I'm like I cannot do this um, and I find it's like half half success is attitude right you can do it it will happen I'll learn and if I want to talk to people I'll, I'll find a way to do it <laughs> Right, so at the end, you know, with words, with gestures, with pointing at stuff, right? So, and of course, younger you are, we talked about that it is easier, but I think in, in any, I know I told you I learned Spanish when I was a bit older, but now Spanish is my stronger language, even better than my first language. Because I lived in that culture and I lived with the family and it's a matter of immersing yourself in the language, I feel, it's also the key because if I would probably stay only with Ukrainians and only speak Ukrainian, my Ukrainian would be much better, that's for sure. <laughs> I cannot say it's great at this point, uh, but I think because of that, I also learn faster, right? Like you have to learn the language and being with international friends or Canadian friends definitely helps to, um, to build that vocabulary and English language as well. You know? So beside the language, I know you were very young, like teenager, and when I, when you were a teenager, like like struggles with financial and stuff is not a big deal because you are not mm. you are not like making the money, like you are not worried about yeah, worried about bills, right? <laughs> but like, was it as an issue or was it a struggle for your family or? Uh, definitely for the family and I really felt it and I remember that very clearly I, I think before I shared the story with you because um, you still come at this age when you're not that young and you kind of don't see it we um, we rented I remember the, our first condo and I remember kind of making it month to month and really you know not really spending much and um, I knew from that age that I have to help the family for me that wasn't kind of um, like a question mark I knew if I wanted to go to the university if I like I needed to apply I learned it in this probably like a year because then they started talking about like okay when you graduate you have to go to university and universities are not free and you have to pay and they talked to us about scholarship or bursaries right away I had like my switch I gotta get that right because when I was in university, I remember my mom saying, well, I know we can't help you much. And I was like, you feed me and I have a place to stay, right? <laughs> I was like, I'll deal with the university myself. But I was so grateful. And, you know, I think um, because of immigration, it actually taught me how to be, you know, really plan your spending, really, you know, buy the essential at the beginning. And uh, probably one of the things I remember the most, I, I was thinking I have to find part-time job and, I learned in Canada a lot of, I, I didn't think about it at all in Ukraine. It wasn't something common. But as soon as I came here, I saw like, hey, you, like people that are 15, 16, everybody's working, get a part time, can babysit. Like one of my, my first job was actually babysitting. And it was so little, I think maybe $5 an hour. But I was so happy to make something that I can, you know, say that this is my money and I can spend it. And uh, we came in summer, I believe, and then it was Christmas, right? Six months later, and I just remember how much I wanted the Christmas tree. And it was so expensive, we couldn't have the real one it, it, because we were in a condo. And uh, I just had it in my head, I have to get a Christmas tree. And 
it's so special. Believe it or not, we still have it. We put it every Christmas. And I tell my kids that story because I think it's so dear to me that I remember that Christmas tree that cost $90. That was like all the money I ever saved. And I, I told my mom, I'm going to buy the Christmas tree for the family. So I bought the tree and I don't know how, but it survived till now. I was away. My mom used it. And now they brought it to our house. So we do have that same Christmas tree. But we had no decorations. And that wasn't kind of like, oh, we have the Christmas tree. We don't know how to decorate mm -hmm. it. And there was no other money <laughs> to buy anything else. So this is where the crafty part of, uh, I guess, my mom and I came um, into play because we just bought a, a huge bag of beads <laughs> and pipe cleaners. And I remember making those decorations during that time. And they all look kind of nice because they were the same, at least, right? <laughs> they were not really Christmas decorations, more like crafts. But it meant so much to me to have that Christmas tree. And every time I look back, it always, and during Christmas especially, it reminds me of that time of our immigration, of that first time buying something, you know, that, um, that seemed to cost so much, right? Uh, but for me, I really think it, it, there's part of me that it always be immigrant and going through this hardship it made me who I am right so the way I appreciate things I hope my kids will you know I always thought about like wow they have more than I ever had oh right? yeah so young. <laughs> but I always we are, we are the first generation so exactly. I, yeah. I don't think they will experience what we experienced so. exactly exactly but I do think like I would really want them to go on exchange I think it's a bit of that part of you know mm -hmm. living somewhere and learning on your own um it's hard to say now, right? My mom always say, oh, you'll see when you have to let go of your child, that's very difficult, right? But I really think it's um, all those experience, immigration, me living abroad, uh, really being like, all my friends are really international. I, am, I think I'm really proud of that. That kind of in all parts of the world, I feel like I have a connection you know? <laughs> because we live there, we met here and then they move back or whatever it is. But I think it really, makes me happy and makes me who I am, knowing like all those experiences at the end, you can really look back and say, wow, it was such a positive change, right? And you are who you are because of that change. And no matter how hard it was, mm. it's nice to look back at it and say, well, I am who I am because of those, you know, hardships or those yeah. learning experiences. It made made us stronger, right? So Yeah, exactly. It doesn't kill you, make you stronger. <laughs> But I really love the story about the Christmas tree. Like I feel like that really so many people can relate to that. Maybe it's not Christmas tree, maybe it's something else. But yeah, like something, something first, you really wanted, right? <laughs> yeah, the first thing that especially the first year, is it the new year, is it the first birthday or uh whatever it is when you move or when when you immigrate to a new country, like it doesn't mm -hmm. matter Canada or somewhere else, like Mm -hmm. Those first times is just we always remember because it was just so new and like you were new in the country and like you didn't know much or you didn't have much and mm -hmm. yeah I, I'm I'm glad you kept it I'm glad you had yeah you still have that tree and that's the honestly I really love the story you're telling and I'm sure you can pass it on to your kids and. And I hope I hope you have you have a picture with it too when you came and Yeah, oh like every Christmas. Yeah, for sure. We took the every Christmas picture we have is is that tree. We never had any other one. <laughs> you can you can seriously like as a photographer and now thinking like maybe you wanna go back. Like, oh yeah. Lodge of all these pictures with the Christmas tree. Like Wow, you made me think. Yeah, because those pictures are in print. Like my parents still have some albums when when we immigrated. I remember I was making albums per year. Now not anymore. It's more digital, but I do try to print small albums, but those you know that were thicker ones oh, where yeah. you like had to stick your pictures. I was like, I will have to go back. Um, because recently two two summers ago I went back to my mom's house and I was going through those pictures but more focus on family and said it to all our families like oh my god look how young we were or like we reunited or we traveled together or something and we look at those pictures uh or like some friends that they're still you know we're still in touch and i was like did you see this is like so many years ago we're so young 
Um, and uh, but for sure, I'll now next time I look through those albums, I'll have to I'll have to take the pictures of the Christmas tree pictures. <laughs> yeah, like honestly, like pictures. Kind of story, right? Doesn't matter when, but it's just capturing those precious moments, and you can still keep it for later on. And yeah. I'm because I just moved and. The other day I brought the old pictures and like me and my oldest we were going through looking. She wanted to know the, all the history behind all these pictures and which is yeah. amazing because I was like, oh my God, she wants to know. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't imagine like those pictures even like so many years ago, right? Because funny, you, we did the same actually. We're looking at the few albums we have here. I print them now with Shutterfly. And they're thin, which is nice because we're in a small space, so you can keep more. But we looked a few years ago, you know, when the kids were a little, and they were so, they love it, right? They're like, this is me, and this is you, and like, and where is the little one? Oh, he wasn't born yet. He's not here. You know, and they're always like, hold on, where's the album when he was little? And so we tried to look at those pictures, and we're talking within the last five years, right? So imagine when it's uh, really like going back, you know, 10 or more years ago. That's really amazing. <laughs> Yeah. So but you you made me think. Yeah, I have to get those albums and <laughs> make make a make an album with the Christmas tree. So that's oh, for sure. For sure. That, that would be, be an amazing album. Yeah, 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 for sure. So um going back to the to the questionnaires and so yeah, you talked about the, the money issue and then the language and uh so how did you overcome the struggles or the fears you had? Like, I'm sure you had some fears. I know, I know you talked about, so you got this scholarship for university, right? For university, yeah. Financially, in a way, like I always, since we pretty much came here, I was working. So I remember that really well. I kind of was always um, trying to understand, like, what other opportunities are there. And I remember going kind of from the from one part time to the next, like um, I, I worked in quite a few places, I guess. But um, so babysitting, I mentioned it was furs and I worked at Subway. I still love their sandwiches. Um, then I worked at Staples, you know, the store, right? So like all these different stores and I was trying to like, okay, what else can I do? Like if the hours were better or the pay was better, right? Trying to kind of grow with it. Um, and funny enough, I think uh, before I even graduated and everything, I worked at President Choice Financial, right. uh, which is in Loblaws right now and actually switched to Simple, but it was a, a, a Loblaws kind of banking, right? So you have a pavilion. Okay. And I, I think, you know, like now looking back, it made me feel so good that I, uh, the guy came to interview and he was writing an article about the banking industry, right? And he wrote like, the youngest member, but uh, definitely like really well educated, like taught, taught me about all these difference in mortgages and uh, checking accounts and all that. And I remember, I feel like I was so young, but it helped me like talking about financials, right? This is one of the experiences that really taught me about how mortgage works and what accounts, like difference between accounts and line of credit. And I'm thinking, my God, I was like, just thinking of university. How did I get into this but it was an opportunity right i probably might not even get it if i wouldn't be an immigrant but i was always kind of okay i have to you know try to find something better like make a little bit more money because i have to pay university right um so I'm always kind of conscious of that that i need to contribute to the family mm -hmm. uh and of course i my mom will never say no you have to pay right but i always knew it and i think as a child like um I mean, we're all different, but I feel as an immigrant child, you are much more you know, paying attention to your environment and where you are at, where you need to go, right? Because it's, it's a really eye-opening experience, right? And everything is new and you try to figure it out where you belong and what you're supposed to do now, right? As a member of the family. And it is teenager, right? So at this point, you're already growing and learning kind of how the society works, right? And how do people get food and you just don't expect your parents, you know, to like, they grow it in the garden. No? Um, so I remember, yeah, financially, I was always, from the very beginning, I think that really helped me to be more conscious of this and kind of learn and grow. And I always worked, always applied for every scholarship I could possibly apply for. 
Uh, then they had bursaries once you're in the university, so I applied for those, saying, you know, we're immigrants, we like, we're very, <laughs> we're in the basic budget, so I do need your help. And one, I, one year I have to do as an exchange, I, just, I have to go abroad, I had to go abroad. Uh, so that was another struggle, like how do I go, because you have to pay, right? So then I learned that there are um, loans and all the stuff, so I applied for that, and I worked for, for like full time every summer. Um, so that was uh, I was a waitress. Too. I remember like, oh, this makes good money. You know, I can save money because it's all tips, right? And uh, so that was another experience I had. So in terms of work, I was definitely conscious of I always had to work and help as much as I can. Uh, the uh, for me the biggest struggle I think with friends too that I don't think I mentioned is uh, is extrovert and kind of always wanted to be with people I was like well all my friends are gone what do I do now right so I think it took me I would say a year in one year I was really wow I think I can live here and I like it and I can find a place where I belong uh, and I remember two years ago I was like no I'm Canadian you know like I want to stay here and I think the biggest shock for me that I told my mom I really like it here and I had my friends at that time so by by approximately a year I felt much more comfortable than my group of friends and I always say you know once you have a group of friends you feel like you like you're good right like you can talk to them and share and uh, and then two years later uh, I had a trip I went back home and I think this is when it really hit me that I was and I guess it's a really teenager you just adopt right like you dress like your peers you know you talk like your peers I had necklaces up to here or bra uh, bracelets I think we were making these beads and baggy pants I don't know what else we're wearing my mom was going crazy I was painting my nails black <laughs> and I go back to uh, Ukraine and I felt a foreigner like I did not feel like I belong there and I think that helped a lot I don't know if for other um, people who immigrated that changes or not but for me going back was actually the reality was like no my life is there now mm -hmm. and it was so crazy to think that right you think two years it's not that long of a time but everything changed like I had people that would talk about me in front of me thinking that I'm American mm -hmm. because they were like oh look at her hat and she had like crazy bracelets and because it, it wasn't the style there right it was very like European high heels beautiful hair all the time <laughs> I guess I don't know and that was really like two braids a hat you know like very much you know Canadian teenager right. and uh, I felt really really um different and for me since that I came back and said I want to go back this is my home. My friends are here and we have family, of course, that I was very attached to. And I literally just wanted to stay with them. I didn't want to go out on my own. I'm like, no, I go see my friends. I go see my family and then I go back. Right. So I find that was really an interesting factor for me. So right. Sometimes maybe going back actually make you realize how much you appreciate Canada. <laughs> True. So you, um, I just want to go back. Uh, so you were here, you went to university, and then one year in university, you went to... Yeah, I had to study abroad, exactly. So one, one year, one, one, one full, no, one full year. Okay. So out of four years, one, I lived in Latin America. And I said, that was for me like a second okay. in Chile, okay. in Santiago, Chile. Uh, and uh, very, very far. The reason I think I went there, I said, well, I'll never go back there. So far, it's this kind of Why did country... You why did you choose Chile? Uh, so I had four choices mm -hmm. where to go because I speak Spanish. So depending on the language you choose, then you have countries to pick from. And it was Peru, Chile, Mexico, and Spain. I originally wanted to go to Spain, but then I realized half of my program was going to Spain. And the idea was to like immerse yourself in the, in, you know, the environment, learn the language. And I thought, maybe that's not the best option. And they start telling us like, guys, be more flexible, to try to, you know, go to different countries. We said, okay. And then we had, uh, interesting, because I studied business concentration and marketing, we had a consultant, business consultant coming and talking to us uh, about his experiences. And he said, if I would retire now, I will go to Chile. And I was like, what? What, why would you go to Chile? What's in Chile, right? I was so intrigued. I was like, man, I got to learn more about this country. 
And I think his speech, I remember really staying in my head, I was like, well, I gotta see what it is. And I thought I would never go back. It's so far away. And I said, you know what? Let's just go to Chile. And somehow that's what ended up happening. And funny enough, I went back after, I came back. And then later I lived three and a half years in Chile with my husband at that point. So it's, um, it's like, you know, you think you'll never go back and then you end up living there. So for me, it's actually my home for sure. Probably second one after, after Canada. Uh, but that was my other immigration, I would say. Right. And it was really hard at the beginning. I remember how stressed I was with not understanding the language and Chilean Spanish is a lot of slang. So I, I didn't think my Spanish was great and with slang, I thought I didn't have Spanish at all that I could not understand what they're saying, <laughs> not communicate. Uh, so it's, I would say one month, I, my mom said I cried every day, call her saying, I want to go back. I don't know what I'm doing here. I cannot pass any of the classes because I don't even understand what they're talking about. And uh, I don't remember the crying so much. Which yeah, is really all crazy. the classes were in Spanish? All the classes were in Spanish. And they, I did have to, I didn't, I, they didn't care about if I get 80% or 70%. They just cared that I passed the class, right? That was kind of the requirement for international students. I was like, I can't pass the class if I have no idea what he's talking about. And I remember economics class was just unreal. It's not my favorite to start with. And in Spanish, I'm like, I really don't understand this. And I remember just writing, you know, he would write and I just copy. You know, I knew how to write. So I'm like, I'll just write. And then I go home. And I translate word by word. I was like, I have no idea what it is. So I tried to translate. That was the night. And I'm like, okay, now I can kind of understand. And they're like, look at the graph. I don't know how, but I think the difference, I was by myself. There was no one who spoke English, which was insane. And I was like, how is it possible, you know, in the whole country? Uh, well, I mean, in my environment, no. I lived with a Chilean family, no friends. There were some French speakers, some German speakers, no English speakers. And one month later, I had to speak the language. I'm like, I got to do it. And I remember start having conversation and kind of following in the class about one month later. Two months later, I was definitely much more comfortable. And I remember it's six months was such a breakthrough moment for me because we wrote all our exams. And one of the exams, I got the highest mark in the class. Wow. And of course, they didn't judge, I don't think, for writing, but the the answers right i got all the answers correct and i remember thinking this is not possible how is like you know someone coming from a foreign country sitting in the class with all the you know spanish speakers can get a higher mark and we were laughing about it and at this point i felt like i made it you know if i can do this i can do anything right <laughs> yes. but, can you ask you how old were you at that time uh 20 yes 20 yeah. 20, 1920. Uh, and, uh, but it, it was like a shocking reality. And I was like, oh my God, I'm doing it again, right? The new language, the new environment. Um, but definitely it, may, it makes you stronger, 100%. Because I think going through the first, like my immigration to Canada, going there, shocking as it was, you kind of already know. Everything would be different. You have to make new friends, right? Like you wouldn't know the language. So it definitely helped. But the stress level, I think it's still there. And I think you went through a few immigrations too. So you probably know as much as you kind of, you know what to expect. Every time is different, right? The stresses are there. You have no idea how you're going to make it through it. And it's just, it's time, right? At the end, it's just time. And it's yeah, going to happen. Well, right? I think one thing that um, overcoming the struggles, I, I feel like, I think you're the same way. Um, just keep, keep your mind open. Like keep, like at, at adopting like new things and it is scary it is very scary at the beginning doesn't matter which country doesn't matter canada or chile or i went to spain i had no idea like i knew the numbers one to ten from dora the explorer <laughs> i didn't know i just knew the colors <laughs> that's all i knew because of my kids like they were watching dora in in us so doesn't matter like how long or like when you left your country or when you're emigrating it's just a, any emigration any new emigration it's a new challenges new beginning new uh, starting all over again like i emigrated five times 
you emigrated like from Ukraine to Canada and Canada to Chile. <laughs> okay, we are back. I don't know what happened. We just lost the connection, but here we are again. It's, um, yeah, we were talking about the, yeah, emigrating for me, like going to Spain, not knowing the language, not knowing anybody, nothing, not even like the clothes, because I never knew, like I had no idea about the Spain. Like, how's the weather? And I was always thinking, oh, it's gonna be warm. It's gonna be like, <laughs> so we, I we moved in April and April was still cold. Like, because in Madrid, it's lots of mountain there. And then like, I didn't even bring jacket for the kids. Like, it was all short sleeves and like, you know, like shorts and like, I remember, so we had to go by because it was, everything was new, everything like, yeah. From the weather, from the people, from the language, from the culture, everything. So, yeah. and for you, I know, like you emigrated uh, four times, three times. Yeah, three times. Well, moved around, I guess, because I lived in Mexico and I lived in Chile and I came to Canada, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but for me, it's funny you said the clothes. I think I can so relate because um, I remember even in Chile, everybody made fun of me, like, "You're Canadian. Why are you always cold?" But their winter in Chile, it's zero degrees, no heating. And I was like, how do you survive this? I remember sitting in my head, in my gloves, trying to work or like read something. And I was like, this is insane. It's 24 hours a day. You're constantly cold, wow. right? And I was like, well, in Canada, when there is zero degrees, normally we turn on the heat, right? <laughs> and you can go home and feel warm. Or you have like a super warm jacket, right, that you can wear. They are finding like, oh, it's only a few months, so it's not a big deal. Right? And I was like, I cannot survive this for me. The winter, the two months there is much worse than six here. You know? <laughs> but I think if I ever go back, I will be like, no, I'm bringing my jackets, you know? Because <laughs> like, like, as you said, right, every climate is different. And then I felt like it got into my bones. Like I just felt constantly cold. Yeah, I'm like, no way. I wear warm clothes and I'm okay, right? <laughs> Uh, it's like, it, it, that's the thing. like the thing about immigration doesn't matter where like nobody can prepare you for no. any of it any of the experiences even they talk to you you ask questions like you have even if you have friends as as much as you when whenever you are there you can experience the whole thing yourself and like that's exactly. the, that's the beauty of it you know just yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like no, and I think for immigration, you reinvent yourself in a way too, right? I remember even like talking about Chile that I went there and I said, well, if like once I get the language, okay, you know, and like a few months later, I'm like, okay, I can handle this. I realized, hey, like I can actually maybe work part time, you know, to, you know, so the whole year is not going to be so expensive and I don't have to take all the crazy loans. And uh, so I was like, yeah, but what can I do? Right. Because the part time there is different. It's not like um, here you can work anywhere in any store. Right. It doesn't really exist much there. So you start thinking, OK, what can I do? And then I had those promotional girls that were like bring stuff or samples, etc. And they're like, oh, you can do that. If you had a friend that in, in, in the industry and I was like, oh, sure, I can do that, too. Right. Like, you like learn. Right. You adopt and learn and see where the opportunities are. Right. And you kind of just uh, like, as you said, being positive and open-minded are really two yeah, big things because yeah. you cannot come with the mentality that you had, you know, they, many people call it past life, right? Because what they live in another country is very different. And then you come to the new place and you say, no, everything's going to be the same. No, it's not possible, right? Every country is different, all different friends, different jobs. So you really have to be like, okay, happens what happens, I'll, I'll figure it out, right? And I think that's really the biggest yeah, and for me especially, um, you know, even immigrating five times, as I said, like, but moving to Spain for me was, I, you know, sometimes as an immigrant, we do the jobs that we don't even like, but we do it because of the money or because you want to learn the experience. Yeah, yeah. You want to be part of the society. And mm -hmm. I always, because my family, my dad, my sister, they used to work at the bank. And I, I hated working at the bank. And I always said, I'm not going to work at the bank. Even back home in Iran, like, yeah. oh, you know, you can get this job so easily. That it's not me. It's not me. But when I went to Spain, even though I learned the language, but I wasn't like 
hundred percent comfortable, you know, confident to speak and work in Spanish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I found a job like in customer service for the English banks because mm -hmm. the banks that they were um, like dealing with in US or Canada or UK. Yeah, yeah. So I got the job there and believe it or not, I worked for three years there. I can't even remember. Uh, like me sitting at the desk, like nine to five job for me, it was a torture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally made your personality, right? Uh, I did but it. It's amazing how you came back. I think for me, what's amazing, like in your story, right, is that you're like, you know, I did that. I had to do it. I learned it. I went through it and I realized it's not for me, right? No, but I made, no, the, the, the part that experience about making, making new friends and because I had to work with just a Spaniard, like, it was all yeah. the Spanish people. Mm -hmm. I learned the language so much quicker when Absolutely. I was working with them, and I was in the environment, and I was making money. So exactly, win-win, <laughs> right? Positive. Win -win. Exactly. <laughs> that was a positive part for me. So that's what I'm right saying. Right. Even though we pay some prices, but we learn so much from it. And oh, everything every single experience i would say every single experience makes you who you are right you wouldn't be the same you wouldn't think the same you wouldn't have the same beliefs there is so much connection to your past right and everything yeah. and i think immigration is definitely even i i strongly believe that if you come to canada let's say right and some people say you know what i don't like it here to go back yeah they are different people just because of that experience of adopting of being somewhere else right they're like they're better they're stronger they are more open-minded like things change you cannot stay the same person when you go uh, to another country right you no grow yeah, like you grow you grow, you grow. That, that's the word and i think just because of that if anybody consider immigration and we have actually a few friends um my best friend just immigrated to spain uh, which I was like, I'm not Canada, <laughs> hoping next step is Canada. Uh, and I had another friend from Chile actually contacting us saying, can you help us? Actually a few, like for this year that we've been here in Toronto, a uh, few contacted us saying, oh, we're considering coming to Canada. And I would say, do it, you know, because for me, it's like, there is absolutely nothing you can lose. I really don't believe that immigration is a lost opportunity. I feel like it's no matter what happens, you always gain because that experience and that growth and there's so, so many factors, right? Just to see other people, other languages, other cultures, trying something new. I really feel everybody grows, you know? Like you cannot kind of say, no, I, I step back and I learn nothing. I, I don't believe it's possible. It's just not possible to be in such a new place and not learn, True. right? No, it is. It is definitely scary. At the beginning, it's scary. For sure, for sure. But it's just keep keep your mind open and yeah, go for it. Like just yeah. dive in. Like yeah, you know? and you can always go back, as my mom said. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but you'll be better, stronger, smarter, right? <laughs> More open-minded, probably, right? Yeah, true. So I know we have to wrap up. So. Um, just one more question, two more questions. What price did you pay to get where you are now? Uh, for me, I think the biggest, um, you know, when I look back and what makes me a bit sad is the family relationship because you break the family with every immigration, right? So when you grew up in your country, everybody's together, your cousins, your siblings, your parents, grandparents, and for us, we split right and that split i think for the rest of my life will be there and it's probably the um, the price i guess you pay for those new experiences and as much as like i love canada but i i'm far and i always think that the, we try to be close we have whatsapp groups right we'll enter writing letters to you know messenger to whatsapp mm -hmm. right to skype we try them all but uh I feel that that relationship is hard, right? Because the family, when you're there and you see them every weekend, is different when you just chat on WhatsApp, right? right? And for example, my niece and my nephew are in Europe, so I feel like I 
it's always sad for me that I wish we'll be so much closer because if we'll be in the same city, it will be so much easier, right? To spend those days together or like my cousins, right? That I'm growing up with them and they're like my sisters to me. And um, now we're like, I don't know as much as I want to know about them as much as we try to stay in touch, right? And uh, so for me, uh, grandparents was also the biggest one. My grandma was the like my rock, you know, she, she was closer to me than my mom before immigration. And, um, I always blame it. Probably that was the hardest thing that happened to me with the immigration because, um, she got sick cancer and I blamed us for leaving. We kind of always said, you know, cancer is really to stress and the stress of losing us and us not being there. I always in my mind at that point, I was always, no, it's because of us that happened. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long, long time to kind of start being happy again and living my life. Um, when she passed away, it was so shocking to me that I was like, wow, I did not even get to see her. And I was, when they told us, you know, like, it's not good. It might be six months that she has to live. And I, I bought a ticket. I said, I'm going. And then and there my mom went and she said it's for the best because it was really tough at the end when she didn't recognize us, which I, like, I tried to call her. And, but it was so um, difficult uh, for me to, um, to remember those. Like I think it's still one of the most stressful and saddest moment in my life to go through this. And I thought, you know, immigration had a lot to do with that. Um, but, uh, you know, as anything, right, nothing is 100% perfect, right? So you have to lose in some ways. And for me, it was probably that the relationship I wish I would have with my family. And I hope the technology helps. And we try to do Zoom calls now, right? And, you know, now we are just so fortunate that we have, at least we have. We can, right. At least we can see each other. I mean, of course, not the same as day to day in the same city, but still we can be a lot more connected, right? And now I can see my family Facebook and Instagram and kind of, <laughs> if they don't tell me, I, yeah, I see them on social media. Mean, you know, right, right now that we, even we are in the same city, we have to do this. <laughs> so it's pretty much the same if you are in Canada or somewhere in Europe, right? <laughs> exactly. Now everybody is like immigrant. Like everybody are, loves Zoom, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah. With, uh, so let's do the last question. I know you have the kids and... <laughs> So what's your suggestion to the rest of the immigrants? Uh, so if it's specifically for Canada, I always say Canada is an amazing country to live. Do not think twice, you know, just go for it. And, you know, some people think about it when they apply and right. I would say, just apply, you know, you don't even know if you get it. Don't worry about it because they start worrying before they even consider applying. Right. I was like, when you apply, you call me and then everything will be okay. You know. <laughs> Because like, I can tell you all about schools and jobs and I was like, but you know, get the papers first, the first step first, right? But I, um, I had that phrase, you know, that I probably to leave you with is like, don't look back and compare, but look forward and search for opportunities, right? For me, this was probably that comparison that I've seen in many people, especially with immigration, it's it really takes away your experience of enjoyment and seeing those opportunities that are out there, maybe changing your profession, maybe, you know, making new friends, learning a new language. Oh, it's just yeah. so many opportunities. Yeah, and I say, I say it to lots of Persian people. doesn't matter where you're coming from, because as you said, yeah. you always have a past and you have something back home and you want to yeah. keep holding on. When you yeah. keep holding on and not letting go, it's not about forgetting your country or it's not about your origin. Like you want to forget it. It's just yeah. the stuff that you had, you can't have the same thing over here. Maybe it takes time. It's not yeah. possible. It is possible, but not at the beginning. Maybe it takes a few years to build up. Yeah. To that. Yeah. Yeah. But if you want to, as you said, even in your mind, if you want to go back and forth, back and forth, like comparing, that's that's really it's not helping you to enjoy uh, right enjoy what you want help yeah. you stay it won't help you go back it's just you are always in between, in between. you don't know you're here you don't know you're there it's just yeah. 
Yeah, you're here now, enjoy that. And then two years you decide, no, you know what? Something is not working. You decide what you're going to do next, right? But yeah, keep as you the said, mind open and just look, look forward, forward, right? Look forward, yeah. <laughs> Don't look back. Exactly. Don't look back. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you so much, Helen. That was amazing. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm no problem. And I'm really happy you accepted this. It's a challenge, I know. It's a... <laughs> No, but thank you I'm so, so happy that you're part of it. So thank you, and I think hopefully many, you know, who consider, as you said, immigration or kind of just newcomers. I hope it helps somebody, you know, to yeah, I'm sure it will. It will <laughs> feel better, you know, like change your life. And if they're down, they can always call me. <laughs> I'm always like, please, if you want some positive energy, I'm happy to share. <laughs> I love your positive energy and I know you do dance and stuff, so keep doing your... <laughs> Where did you go? Helen? Are you there?